Hello and welcome to Woman Power. My name is Lorna Grayling and today we have a truly remarkable guest. He has millions of followers on Instagram as he brings us breathtaking views of the wild and especially the majestic osprey. Mark Smith, if you have not seen his channel, you have got to follow it. Mark, Thank you very much for joining us and welcome to the show. Thank you for having me. I appreciate it. Mark, your photography and videography is absolutely phenomenal. I came across it a couple of months ago, actually, on Instagram. I have no idea how, you know, these <laughs> things just pop up, right? And I mean, the art that you display through capturing these majestic birds, um, I mean, it's, it's incredible. Did you study this? How did this love for this bird Ooh. start? Uh, well, take us back. Yeah, yeah. Like, how um, far you want to take us back? <laughs> <laughs> uh, I would say it's been kind of a lifelong fascination mm -hmm. uh, and I credit most of that fascination to my father. He took uh, my, my brother and I uh, when we were younger all the time out into nature and that's how we spent our time with him. Uh, camped a lot, he got into sailing so we spent a lot of time sailing around and kind of living off of what we could pull out of the ocean wow. uh, just because it was a fun thing to do yeah. um, but that kind of introduced me to that and that's when I started to kind of notice uh, all of the different things that the birds were doing um, and it was just kind of seemed natural to mm. to be drawn to it and I, I know I've had a lot of interesting experiences through my life with birds that I thought were normal and as I meet more people I realize that they're not so normal some of these experiences so wow. um, it, it's good stuff definitely yeah and it, I mean your knowledge of these birds is, is just incredible yeah I love listening to the explanation that you set out as well with the photography and the vi videography and I mean how you just take it into slow motion it is it is incredible to watch it is relaxing um, but I mean, did you just pick up a camera one day and start filming these birds or like how Yeah. <laughs> how did you get this <laughs> pretty, bird? <laughs> pretty much, pretty much. And again, back to like with my dad, he, he gave him his film camera, a Minolta. Wow. Um, and would back just in kinda, the day, yeah, right? Yeah. <laughs> Can't would even load see what you're up. filming. That's yeah. right, yeah, yeah. I had no idea what I was doing, but I was, I had fun doing it. Yeah. And then as I got older, I kinda grew away from it and uh, it wasn't cool, you know, mm. to carry a camera around. So <laughs> I kinda teenage. Yes, yes, definitely. Uh, I jumped back into it much much later in life and yeah. I had like one of the biggest things you need with this type of photography or videography is you have to be able to understand the, the animal pretty well and yeah. I have spent my whole life watching them so I had like this second nature uh, to understand them and that is immensely helpful mm -hmm. for for what I do I, I because I've spent so much time around them and watch them I can kind of predict what they're gonna do and uh, that helps me uh, get a lot of the footage and shots that I that I do get so I, I can imagine because when I watch your videos literally it's like you're one with these birds you yeah. know them so well <laughs> I mean that that is absolutely it's apparent you can see it through the video how well you're connected with them um, because to be able to <laughs> On a video camera like right these birds from the sky and how you're following them and 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 following them into the water and then out again that is incredible skill <laughs> it is absolutely phenomenal so um tell me a little bit about these birds like why is this specific bird so fascinating for you oh wow so there's a million birds in there, the there are yeah, you chose yeah. the osprey the osprey yeah particularly. Os yeah um i think mostly because i've spent a lot of time around them but mm -hmm. the the big thing is their determination for mm -hmm. survival like even in some of the craziest 
situations like insurmountable odds, they, they kind of shake it all off and just go back and do it again. They, they never give up. Wow. And I've taken a lot of inspiration from that uh, and things that I've done, you know, like if, if you can kind of connect with them in that way, there's a lot of parallels from their lives and ours. And, and you can take a lot of inspiration uh, and strength out of their behaviors as well. You know, if they can do these things that they can do, then, you know, some of our problems that we have seem kind of petty. I so know. it's, it's kind of nice and humbling in that way. So yeah, I sure. think that would be the, the, the big draw. And then just the, the idea that they can fly and they can at any moment fall out of the sky at 50 miles an hour, submerge themselves into an underwater world that's foreign to them, and then somehow fly away with a fish that sometimes weighs more than them. That, yeah. That's just incredible. I, I, I can't like, I've thought about it for a while. I'm like, why is this so exciting to me? Yeah. And then I, I got to a point where I said, it doesn't matter. It's just exciting. <laughs> so just, just enjoy it. It doesn't have to be a reason. So, um, but that's, I would say that's probably why. Yeah, yeah definitely. And I would, eagles are a close second. I've been spending a lot of time with uh, bald eagles too, mm -hmm. and they're, they're impressive. They're a little bit more of a bully bird. They, they like to steal things. Oh, really? Yeah. I didn't and, know and, that. Oh, and they will throw their weight around to do so. But yeah. um, they're incredible too, to, to watch them do a lot of the, like the midair acrobatics that they do. They can mm -hmm. flip upside down and fly upside down. And it's wow. a, it's a uncommon thing that a, a lot of people say there's only one bird that can fly backwards and upside down. It's a hummingbird, but I've seen all kinds of other birds do it too, specifically eagles. Yeah, they, yeah. they will come at each other and do these barrel rolls and fly upside down and backwards. So it's amazing to, to watch their interactions and how they survive. It's incredible. And it's almost something that, that shouldn't be possible to do. Correct. Yeah. If you think about like flying upside down and if you think about a bird diving down at that phenomenal speed underwater <laughs> and then amongst the waves sometimes get those huge fish That's right. out and then go, like take off into flight. It yeah. is literally almost impossible and yet like you say they're doing it over and um, over and over again over and over yeah. i love what you're saying about never giving up yeah i feel like that is something i absolutely agree that we can use in our own lives today i mean 2024 it's almost like giving up is so apparent everywhere around us because yeah. things are super easy nowadays sure. right everything is quick fix it's microwave food it's this <laughs> it's fast food it's everything is on the phone everything is quick and it seems like it's so easy to give up right perseverance sure. and grit is not really something that gets promoted a lot anymore this is true for our youth yeah yeah um yeah so what an incredible opportunity for you to to film this and to showcase this through your videos and i mean two million followers yeah <laughs> how many channels because i've seen your instagram and your youtube do mm -hmm. you have tiktok or what other channels? i i have uh <laughs> I have all of the social medias, but I, I don't use all of them that much. I don't post a lot to TikTok. Uh -huh. I have Facebook, uh, Twitter, or X, whatever you call yeah, it now, yeah. and then uh, YouTube and Instagram. Yeah, yeah, I've seen your Instagram and YouTube. So uh, two million, almost two almost million. Two million. You're yeah. almost there, right? Yeah. How yeah. long did it take you to, you know, get to two million? Oh, wow. Uh, so I started like actively doing it in 2017. Um, so seven years. Not a lot of, I mean, that's yeah. really great. But yeah. the, the interesting part was it was just a little over a year ago that I was at like a hundred thousand. Wow. So in a little over a year and a half, it's gone from a little over a hundred thousand to where it is now, which is a lot of growth <laughs> very, yeah. very quickly. And but I, that again shows you that perseverance, right? Yeah. Like for seven years or eight years, how many years is that? My, yeah, my, my, seven. my math is not that good. Yeah, yeah, yeah seven. <laughs> Seven years, you've been working, working, working tirelessly, nonstop at this incredible level. Because, I mean, how long does it take you to, to film something like that? Ooh. I mean, it's like a one-minute video, and then how long does that take you? It, it's, a, it's a lot of time out there yeah. capturing all of the stuff. And like to look at it from a bigger point of view, I kind of like to look at that as collecting data. Like mm. you're, you're collecting as much behavioral things as you can about mm -hmm. this animal and then just kind of sifting through and, and mm -hmm. sharing the highlights of it. So I, it, it can, mm -hmm. it can take a long time, but in the same sense, it can happen sometimes in seconds. You just mm -hmm. have to be prepared. Um, so it's, it's important to, 
to kind of know your gear, know the environment where you are, and then know, again, the behavioral aspects of this animal that you're, you're trying to photograph or film. And all of that comes into play at that mm -hmm. moment. And another really interesting kind of side effect from all of this that, that a lot of people who do this are aware of, but a lot of people who don't are not, mm -hmm. is you you get into this zen-like state, like like uh, a lot of people call it like the flow state, mm -hmm. and where everything around you is, is kind of gone for a little while as you're kind of in sync with these animals. And I think that's really important too. And mm -hmm. for a lot of people I know, um, like wildlife, birding, uh, photography, that there's a lot of therapeutic uh, qualities to it. And, and this is kind of one of those. You're, you're busy micromanaging these things, but at the same time, you, you get into this moment where you kind of get it, become one with this bird and you can kind of enjoy their life in a different way. It's mm -hmm. hard to describe other than it's, it's very zen-like. Yeah. Oh, no, so it's, it's amazing. It's phenomenal. <laughs> and I, the, this, you're such a specialist at what you're doing, but the Zen like um, that you're describing now, it comes through the screen because whenever I feel like I've had a rough day and I see your feed come up on Instagram or whatever, I'm like, oh, man, this <laughs> is gorgeous. Yeah. Like, this is phenomenal. And I'm so inspired by these birds, like you said, and what they're doing, what they're accomplishing and never giving up. And I'm like, yeah, no, I can do this again. Like tomorrow I'm going to, you know, yeah, I've got yeah, this. Yeah. It's amazing. Yes. I love it. Yeah. it <laughs> like, share and subscribe to our YouTube channel to allow us to make more episodes and be inspired and empowered by incredible people. Uh, it's great that it has that effect and, and that's one thing yeah. I've learned about social media is mm -hmm. you know the positive aspect yes. of it is it it helps a lot of people see things that they would probably never otherwise be able to see mm -hmm. um, and, and a lot of children too are, are connected and they're like wow I didn't know this and now they want to go outside and they want to experience it so there's mm -hmm. a lot of good stuff that comes from it for sure yeah, you're literally leaving this legacy through these birds and bring these birds into people's homes yeah. in such a phenomenal way. <laughs> Is there anything that you're still wanting to accomplish? Because like when I see your footage and everything, it, it's just, you know, for me, it's perfect. Like I've never seen anything like this before. And I, I, I believe it's that perfect because you've spent years and years and years and you're such a specialist and obviously the gear that you're using must be just spectacular mm -hmm. we can go into that as well but is there anything that you still want to accomplish through these birds or what other dreams i do think you have? i think the one thing that's missing is the underwater aspect of what's happening oh. and, and i would really like to be able to do that and that's wow quite an that's gonna be to, quite something yeah yeah um yeah. i'm not too sure how to approach it yet other than you know casually starting out which is kind of how i do everything it's kind of dip a toe in and and see how it how it works out but i think that's the the one thing that's missing from a lot of the stories is, is to be able to see how they do things underwater because mm. we know how they're doing it in the air we know how they're doing it on the surface but once they're under there mm -hmm. and there's a lot of cool stuff that we think is happening mm -hmm. so it would be actually really nice to be able to document it and have some some facts about that so. and especially when you take it into slow motion it's it's just incredible to see exactly like you say what they're doing and how they're getting out of that water yeah it's amazing you, to see how deep they actually go into the water yeah the, that was another like takeaway from this that i didn't anticipate was all the things you learn by watching something in slow motion that might happen so fast, you know, mm -hmm. our, our brains aren't really equipped to understand it. But when you can watch it back in slow motion, you can kind of analyze it and you learn more about them. Mm -hmm. You learn the little signs and subtle little uh, behavioral differences that say, hey, this is what they're going to do and why. Mm -hmm. um, you also learn a lot about yourself too, uh, specifically. Um, your technique and skill like if you're filming it in slow motion and you make like a one second mistake it's very long in slow motion wow so you can see where your mistakes are and if you're uh, subjective about it or uh, you can look at it in a positive way yes. you, you can say okay i can to learn from yeah, it. yeah i can learn from this and and become better at whatever that is um, and one of the neat things too that i like with the osprey specifically that you don't really notice when it happens you know they'll dive in they'll grab a fish and they fly away but when you can watch them in slow motion, as soon as they come out of the water, they're kind of scanning everywhere around mm. them to find the clear way out because mm. they get a lot of uh, uh, klepto uh, predation. You know, other birds will come in and try to steal for them. Oh. So when they come up, they, they kind of look to the left, they look to the right, they glance up, 
and they're scanning everywhere for that perfect way out that they can get away with their fish. Mm -hmm. And you can watch them in slow motion as they're moving around. They're constantly making these adjustments and scanning according to, you know, possible threats in the environment. And that's something that's I didn't incredible. know. Yeah. Until I started watching Everything it. Everything so. happening in such just milliseconds. And yeah. Slow it down. I think something that was really incredible for me to see is that the eyes, like <laughs> you, you have this ability to film their eyes so beautifully. It's so focused. It's like laser focused Correct. Right, on yeah. that fish. And like, especially when they're diving in, how focused they are on what they're doing right now. Like I drew such, um, for me, that meant a lot. I was like, yeah, you know, that is something for me to, to think about and to be cautious about and to be focused, you know, like I should be laser focused on something. Something because I have this, you know, I can be doing a million things at the same time, and I suppose a lot of women are like that. You know, we're always proud of things that we can juggle. Like I can do all these things at the same time, but you know, they they have this saying when you do all these things, like master of none, right? You yeah. Gotta actually, <laughs> yes. <laughs> sometimes really hone down on one thing and do it exceptionally well, and then that is just what's happening with the birds. And what's happening with you? I mean, it's <laughs> phenomenal. Yeah. So I know you're teaching as well. You're teaching sure. others um, to do exactly this. Tell me a little bit more about your school and, and, and what you do there. Yeah, so I, I do everything privately with individuals and groups. Okay. And uh, my son and I, my son works with me on this. And in fact, I got to give him a little bit of a shout out because all of this really happened because of him. He, wow. he was the one that encouraged me to, to put all of this on social media. Mm -hmm. um, so big thanks to him. But you know, him and I will teach people uh, here in Florida. We go to other places all over the world, where wherever we can take them and put them in a good place to where they can kind of capture this behavior is like the the number one thing. Um, so again, we we go all over the place. Uh, mm -hmm. In Florida, we do it. Uh, other countries, you know, other parts of oh, the United wow. States. Oh wow! You yeah. travel all over the world. Yeah, we do. Yeah. And then does he go with you? He, most of the times, yeah. That's awesome. Yeah. That's such a nice thing to do with your child. It is. And you know, the, 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 one of the cool takeaways that we've had from this that him and I, neither one of us really thought about when we started doing this was the friendships that we make. Mm. We make friends with people from all over the world. And that was never like even part of the goal wow. was to do that. And every single time we go to some crazy place to, to film or document some kind of amazing animal behavior, there's always a human connection story that outshines all of it. Wow. Every single time. And for me, I think that's a really, really cool thing. And to have yeah. like these friends, like you have this extended family all over the world and in different countries, and it's great to, to share uh, all, all kinds of things with these people. But I think that's the, the, the greater good of all of it. It's not only teaching people mm -hmm. so that they can do this themselves and seeing the moments when they understand and it clicks and then mm -hmm. kind of backing off and letting them do it. But having this extended family of friends all over the world too is, is quite fascinating and it's a, it's a real gift. Yeah, I can imagine. And it must feel really good to be a part of that, right? Because this is something you're giving back. Yes. Um, they always say that giving is much better than receiving, right? There's just something in it when you give. And so, yeah, that, yeah. that's pretty special. I, I was just talking about that on the way here. Uh, the, uh, Arnold Schwarzenegger, one of the things he always says is yeah. always make sure you give back. And wow. I, I think that's really important. Um, and I agree. So, mm. definitely. Yeah, me too. I always receive more through giving like, yes yeah yeah definitely definitely yeah. it's much nicer to give <laughs> it than is to receive it, it's fun to work with yeah. people too like i said like to to kind of give them some foundations mm -hmm. and and see it kind of click with them or to help them with a problem that they don't understand mm -hmm. and that i'm i'm really good at kind of troubleshooting the whole photography video scenario because I've done all of the mistakes. Mm. So I know immediately, typically when somebody says, oh, this is giving me this, oh, give me that. I know exactly what this is and I'll explain it to them. Wow. And uh, it, it's great to be able to share that knowledge and then again, like I said, kind of step back and watch them kind of grow on their own. What's and, your bird fly? Yeah. <laughs> Very good point, exactly. <laughs> I love yeah. that. So I did an interview with the producer. She was actually one of uh, Oprah Winfrey's producers uh, for the Oprah show. And uh, she was. we were talking about the power of creativity, mm -hmm. but she was sitting on the beach one day watching these little crabs <laughs> and how she drew such inspiration from these little crabs running on the beach and just what they were doing there. Um, and, and she told the whole, whole story about that. But I just thought that that was so phenomenal 
we don't always realize as humans how powerful it is to go outside. Oh, yeah. And to be with nature and to watch nature. Yeah. We can draw so much from that and it's so emotionally healing. And nowadays people are more indoors, right? It's like after mm -hmm. COVID, everything is done inside from home. What? Yeah. Sure. Yeah, interesting though, uh, COVID did kind of open doors for all of that. There's a lot of people that because they couldn't go do stuff. Mm. They started to do this instead, and, wow. and they started to get outside um, with family, and you know because they're isolating mm. or staying, you know, keeping distance from people. So they were going out with just family, and, and they were learning. And um, there was a lot of growth, I think, in what I do because of that. I, I think mm. that was like a big catalyst. Like it like forced people to change their mindset, mm. and it forced them to get outside and appreciate what was right outside that they'd never had before. Yeah. So there, there was a little bit of positivity out of all that. So. Yeah, absolutely. I, I mean, for us, it, I, I'm an outside person, and, and for a little while we were very blessed to live on the beach in Cocoa Beach, like in a condo, right on the beach. So I could just look out my window and walk out to the patio, and I could see the ocean. And so we had an osprey on the. I'm, I don't know if it's the same one because <laughs> I'm not as attentive as you because you know them. I'm like, yes. you can see this one and this one. Like, I must say, I'm not that attentive. But there was a particular osprey who always sat on this pole with his fish. Every second day or so, he was there and he was there with his fish. Man, I loved watching this guy and I was happy with him when I saw him with his fish. I'm like, yeah, dude, you've got it. Yeah. But I never saw him catch it. He just always came back with the fish. So, sure. yeah, it was pretty cool <laughs> they are amazing yeah so the gear that you're using like mm -hmm. how um, you know how expensive is that for someone Ooh. to just yeah <laughs> how does one start sure um attempting something like the, this? the old saying actually rings true that, you know the best camera is the one you have in your hand okay whatever that is at any time and it's very very easy i'm guilty of it i think every photographer is guilty of it it's very easy to get what they would call gas or gear acquisition syndrome because mm -hmm. you you see you know all of these these things and mm -hmm. and the camera ecosystem is built this way it's built to to get you in at an affordable place mm -hmm. and then kind of <laughs> hang more expensive things in front of, of you course. down the road um so it, i mean th there's a lot of choices mm -hmm. probably way too many to even list um mm -hmm. but my suggestion would be uh at this point in time to jump into you know a mirrorless technology mm -hmm. camera which is kind of the newer style of cameras and uh, they give you a, a better view of the world um, around you pretty quickly you, mm -hmm. you see what you're gonna capture before you capture is so wow. what, what you see is what you get um, for brands they're all good mm -hmm. uh, you, like today you, you can't really go wrong with a Sony and Nikon or a Canon or even mm -hmm. some of the Olympus stuff. They're, mm -hmm. they're all really good. Mm -hmm. um, the big thing though is just to watch the price tags on the entire ecosystem. If you decide you wanted to go in with a Canon, make sure that all of the lenses in the ecosystem are also affordable because that's where they make most of their money. So, yeah. And it can be expensive. Like uh, I think Nikon and Canon right now have the most expensive lenses. Some of them are upwards of fifteen thousand dollars for a lens, so wow. for for this specialized wildlife stuff. But they also have entry level things again that are that are much cheaper. Um, some of them are under a thousand for just the lenses. Um, mm. But the one thing I will say that I've learned with all of this is there's a reason those lenses have that price tag. You you get what you pay for. Wow. There's a huge difference in quality and performance between them. And um, the, there's a big difference in, in everything with that price tag. It's mm. not just kind of inflated. It really offers a lot of extra stuff. Yeah, it's usually the case, right? You get what you pay for. <laughs> yes, yeah. A lot of the time. Sometimes, yeah, no. My dad always used to say that. If you buy cheap, it, it will break or you have cheap. You know, That's you, right. You get what you pay for. This yeah. is true, especially yeah. in the camera world with all this stuff. Yeah. yeah. So I've seen some of your videos where you've... Um, you know the lenses that you're using i mean it's it's long it's yeah. like huge how do you hold that up for you know for a length of time also something that you have to train for or <laughs> <laughs> uh, a lot of just a lot of practice gotcha. uh, i imagine you could train for it i i wouldn't say that i do uh, yeah i try to be health conscious you just do it every day yeah anyway, yeah so. i try to just you know be health conscious exercise every day um, yeah 
But when you do, that's not, that doesn't look easy. I it's mean. not. That, that's the hard part. <laughs> yeah. I think that's one of the misconceptions. Is a lot of people will see my content, yes. and they'll say, "Oh, that's that's easy. I, this guy, <laughs> this guy does it. I can do it." Yeah. Um, and they'll go, they'll buy stuff, and then they're like, yeah. "Oh, wait, this is actually this is actually really hard. Yeah. It takes a lot of practice." Um, yeah. So I, I would say just a lot of hours out there doing it, and at some point you have to learn to ignore the pain that your yeah. body is trying to tell you, hey, this wow. is too much, and, and you gotta, again, kind of push through yeah. to, to get to the other side. So. That perseverance yes. to perfection. It yeah. just doesn't come easy, right? It Nothing does not. that's worthwhile is easy. That's correct. But that's why there's so much inspiration through it, if you can persevere. For sure, yeah. yeah. And you know, there's, a, there's an interesting thing too that I've been learning more and more is people, they get an emotional attachment to this and, a, and an emotional response. Mm -hmm. And I think that's hugely important because mm -hmm. uh, as humans, we're kind of emotional creatures and, and that's kind of one of the things we communicate with. So mm -hmm. um, a lot of people say that that shouldn't exist, like, you know, that you should not anthropomorphize these animals. But I, I disagree. Mm -hmm. I, I think that's what gives us the connection to them. And I think it's vastly important that it exists and, and stays there. Yeah, it's something that's part. You know, I feel like when I'm in nature and I see that, right? Yeah. There's just something inside of me that comes alive or For that sure. finds peace or that finds inspiration. Like, you don't get that from sitting in front of the TV all day. <laughs> that's true. That's true. Yeah. <laughs> Unless you're watching some of your shows. <laughs> Right. <laughs> I can I can definitely see some inspiration there. Sure, sure. <laughs> Mark, uh, one last thought that you want to maybe share with our viewers before we end. We've literally run out of time. Oh, such a great conversation. Yeah, yeah. Um, I, I would say take that uh, perseverance and, mm -hmm. and use it in your life and, and understand like when you're having a hard time, whatever that is, uh, it might not be as hard as you think and, and you can use some of the strength and stuff from from the outside you know the, the wild world of nature to help you get through it i mean don't quit yes yeah don't give up <laughs> exactly <laughs> follow the osprey yeah very good <laughs> thank you so much for being here we really appreciate you ah uh, thank you i appreciate it thanks for having me well, that is it from me, Lorna Grayling and Woman Power. If you would like to know more about Mark and his channels, have a look on the screen. It will be on there. It will also be in our show notes. Uh, like, share and subscribe to help us make more episodes. And until next week, goodbye.